I was downgraded and offered a role for IC4. We will be talking about what were the expectations, what was the difficulty, what was my approach towards the problem. They just want to see how you are designing the classes. The problem statement was to actually do a machine coding for a parking lot problem. All the two wheelers can be parked in a four wheeler, but a four wheeler can only be parked in a four wheeler. Electric vehicles can only be parked in electric vehicle section. If your expectations are going to be around machine coding, then that actually adds up an extra pressure on the candidate. My interviewer specifically mentioned to me that I used to put a small comment in the code only. Interviewers put a feedback after the round. This kind of like puts a positive feedback in the mind of the interviewer. Uh, the low level design rounds of Uber are going to be medium difficulty level and which is very much in sync with other companies they can already see that the solution is extendable enough that any new type of vehicle can be very easily integrated. All the enums, all the classes are written in a way that they support extendability and that's technically the agenda of the LLD round. I almost forgot to actually have one electric vehicle class. So recently I posted a video on my channel where I talked about my interview experience with Uber. So recently I interviewed with Uber for an IC5 role and the final uh, I would say result was the fact that I was downgraded and offered a role for IC4 which is kind of like L4 SD2 role and a lot of comments were coming on that video to actually take kind of like a deeper dive and slightly bit more explanation around the system design aspects of Uber. So in this particular video I am going to talk about specifically the low level design round of Uber. So technically in the complete Uber process, there were two system design rounds. One was a low level design round and the second one was a high level design round. I'll make a separate video on the high level design aspect because in this video, we'll be talking about what were the expectations, what was the difficulty, what was my approach towards the problem in the low level design round. If you have any questions in this particular video, do drop them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them as much as possible. And I would highly recommend you guys to watch the video till the end because Uber's LLD round was one of those rounds which kind of like very comprehensively defines majority of the LLD rounds that you are going to face in any other company apart from Uber as well. So that is going to be very, very beneficial for you. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing because we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead. So let's just start. Now, before I talk about the problem statement, I would like to talk about uh, the overall experience with Uber's uh, I would say LLD round. So a couple of friends of mine also gave Uber's LLD round as well. And you can find that tons and tons of articles on lead code discuss section where people have talked about their experience. But majority what I was able to find is that in Uber, there might be a chance that in the LLD round, there is a case that the problem statement that will be given to you, you might be only expected to code the class design and the entity layer, right? Or I would say the model layer where you are just coding all the relevant classes. You do not need to write the final executable code. You do not need to handle actually the test cases altogether. They just want to see how you are designing the classes. Whereas another type of a pattern can come up in Uber where they will expect you to have an end to end solution working where you have driver code available as well. All the relevant classes, all the design patterns in place, all the um, I would say object creation part, input taking part, everything is end to end. So a lot of friends of mine were given problem statements around something like book my show, but they were only expected to code the classes. In my case, I was expected to code the solution end to end, like it should be a working solution, more like a machine coding round where I had a couple of expectations altogether and I had to make sure that the final running code takes input based on those expectations and produces the right output. So that was kind of like interesting and why I'm specifically mentioning that because uh, the LLD round for uh, Uber is a one hour round. In a one hour round, if your expectations are going to be around machine coding, then that actually adds up an extra pressure on the candidate, right? So this was something interesting, but I believe this happened with me because I was interviewing for an L5 role, IC5 role. So maybe for IC5 roles, this is the expectation that you should have a working solution because all of the other friends of mine whose interview experience I heard, they were interviewing for the IC4 role. So keep that thing in mind that maybe in IC4 also, you might be expected to have a end to end working solution, but at least for IC5, I was given that particular thing. Now, coming to the problem statement, what is the problem statement? The problem statement was a very standard problem. And this is something that I have seen with Uber. They don't like innovate a lot on the LLD problem statements, I believe as much as some other companies do. Like for example, some of my friends were asked like very straightforward book my show. And even in my case, the problem statement was to actually do a machine coding for a parking lot problem. Now, parking lot is a very, I would say famous low level design problem in a lot of courses, online tutorials, um, 
medium articles you will find a lot of people actually starting to learn low level design with kind of like a parking lot problem i still remember that when i was in college i was interviewing for a company named as gojek they used to give parking lot problem as a take home assignment as well so this is a very very famous question if you are somebody who is preparing for lld definitely you must have uh, solved the problem of parking lot even in our system design cohort we do solve the parking lot problem in very in depth manner as possible so like this is the same problem statement that was actually given to me not much of a changes here and there it's just that we i was kind of like expected to make sure that i support the parking lot for normal four wheeler vehicles two wheeler vehicles and electric vehicles as well and there were a couple of conditions that okay all the two wheelers can be parked in a four wheeler but a four wheeler can only be parked in a four wheeler electric vehicles can only be parked in electric vehicle section and so on and there was multi floor support that was expected because a lot of parking lot problem people solve with respect to one floor in mind but this problem statement was expected with respect to multiple floor but an interesting thing was that uh, because the time uh, available to code the problem was small we didn't have to figure out a lot of allocation algorithm it was just like first come first serve whatever is the first available slot compatible to that particular vehicle let's say it's a two wheeler so whatever is the first available two wheeler compatible slot available you are going to put that two wheeler there so it's kind of like a linear search and the first available slot you have to find so that was kind of like um, i would say easy it's just that we have to keep the solution kind of like extendable because we had to support different different type of vehicles so this was the problem statement and i had to code kind of like an end to end working solution corresponding to that now with respect to the expectation my interviewer specifically mentioned to me that a working end to end solution is the p0 requirement for us so time management is something that i have to keep in mind i cannot be in a situation that okay i am doing a very great class design but i am just able to do like one third of the problem and it's not in a working solution so that was something that i had to keep in mind and in fact my interviewer was very very supportive he specifically mentioned to me that do not go into the hassle of public private i know the level you are interviewing for knowledge of public access modifiers and private access modifiers is very very common so just make sure that you uh, keep everything public don't need to go into the hassle of getter setters why because it was an online coding platform we were not having libraries like lombok that can do a lot of code generation for us so he specifically mentioned to me that i can just move ahead with all public properties to save time as much as possible so these kind of things i would have also clarified myself that okay uh, should i go with something like this because we have less time but this time my interviewer specifically mentioned that to me and i would recommend everybody to make sure that based on your knowledge of how fast you can code and how much time you have left get get this clarity with your interviewer otherwise eventually you will be in a situation where you have a very good design but maybe it's not working so my p0 requirement was to have a working solution now in order to make sure that i also deliver and explain my design pattern skills my low level design skills i ensured that i focus on a working solution but wherever i can see that okay this thing can be improved by a design pattern i used to specifically at least mention that that let's say if we do not have much time left i can at least mention i and to mention that i used to put a small comment in the code only because i know most of the uh, interviewers put a feedback after the round let's say one or two days later so they they can generally forget if i just say something but if i am going to write that maybe in the form of a comment they will be able to recall that okay this particular guy or girl actually mentioned some interesting design patterns here so whenever i was coding all the classes i used to mention that we should have technically a builder class implemented for this wherever required let's say uh, there was a situation where um, the fee the fee calculation could have a strategy so i used to mention that okay for now i'm just having a static fee implemented but ideally this should be coming from a strategy pattern where we can have different algorithms to calculate the fees so on and so forth so all of these interesting things i used to mention so that they know that okay i have the clarity that if given time with actual code bases and actual code implementation i can think about a good design implementation altogether it's not like i'm just putting classes and just uh, creating objects out of it so wherever a builder pattern is required factory pattern is required strategy pattern is required everything either i used i was implementing or if i can see that it was not being implemented or i don't have enough time to implement it i at least put a comment mentioning that with the interest of time i'm not putting this but ideally this should be handled by this particular pattern now one important thing was the fact that in the working solution because there are so many classes that you have to build in a machine coding round sometimes what happens is that people don't care about the corner cases and trying out their uh, working solution so i made sure that at the end i have at least 10 to 12 minutes left 
so that I can try and test my code. You don't want to be in a situation where you give the code to your interviewer that okay, this looks like in a ready state, and they give you a test case which is technically not working. That's uh, pretty bad, and that's not going to put a very good feedback on your uh, interview. So what I made sure that I have some time left. I did my time management in a way that I have some time left, and I tried to at least do some um, I would say testing on my own end. Uh, based on uh, let's say whatever knowledge I had for the problem statement so that when the interviewer gives any um, test case then it's not going to fail and also this kind of like shows your approach toward testing as well this kind of like puts a positive feedback in the mind of the interviewer only if let's say all the corner cases you have already tested before presenting the code that's super good so what I did was I uh, created a couple of um, test arrays and test objects and I already I had them all prepared and then one by one I used to comment the others and run one one after another the other set of test cases because it was not expected to integrate a testing library and all the complete round was conducted on code signal so we had just like a one very long text editor where we had to just keep on creating classes and all we cannot create multiple files and all so this was something which was new and I believe uh, people should try to practice it in this way you might not be having your own local code editor to do a machine coding or an LLD round. I would say this approach helped me a lot because I was proactively showing my uh, skills as a IC4, IC5 engineer that actually gave a really good feedback eventually in the interview. So in my opinion, I believe uh, the low level design rounds of Uber are going to be medium difficulty level and which is very much in sync with other companies uh, that actually take LLD rounds. It's not like the LLD round of Uber is going to be super hard. The problem statements are generally the general ones. It's not like they have a very new problem statement or generally I have not even seen people actually getting game related problem statement, which can be sometimes a bit tricky, right? For example, having a chess design uh, done. So um, I would say the overall difficulty is medium, but I believe the difficulty actually gets introduced, whatever, like even medium difficulty get introduced because of the short timestamp and like a time span and having a working solution. So you have to be fast, you have to be quick, and you have to make sure that you don't make a lot of silly mistakes. Uh, the code editor was good. It was doing a lot of auto completions also, like at some level, it was not AI code completion, but yes, default code completion was there, but still it was not enough to like uh, help me save a lot of time. So you have to go do good time management because time is going to be the key. And because it was specifically mentioned that uh, I have to produce a working solution. So it was kind of like putting a pressure. So I would highly recommend everybody whenever you are giving an LLD round in the initial two to three minutes spend some time in understanding the problem statement and do spend some time in getting the clarifications about the solution ready with your interviewer that what is the expectation from them for example in this complete scenario I almost forgot to actually have one electric vehicle class I had a uh, two wheel two wheeler vehicle class I, I had a normal four wheeler vehicle class but I forgot the electric vehicle class like I forgot to create it but the solution I made was properly extendable that not just electric vehicle if you even want to have introduced let's say a heavy heavy vehicle like something like a truck that can also be very easily integrated to the solution so my uh, interviewer pointed that out that okay you don't have you have not created the electric vehicle class uh, so I uh, said them that, that okay sorry I just forgot I probably missed that there but I specifically mentioned to them uh, that they can already see that the solution is extendable enough that any new type of vehicle can be very easily integrated all the enums all the classes are written in a way that they support extendability and that's technically the agenda of the LLD round. So this is something that is going to be important for you to even showcase as a IC4 or an IC5 engineer. So I hope the overall uh, video was useful. You were able to understand the problem, the requirements of the problem and how I actually approach the problem. LLD rounds can be tricky. They are not generally that tough to be very honest. Uh, but if you have done good amount of practice in the all the, I would say, standard questions, you are definitely going to, um, I would say, have a great feedback, I believe. So I hope this overall uh, interview process was um, useful for all of you if you are planning to uh, make a switch from SD uh, from SD1 to SD2 role or SD3 roles this can be really helpful for you if you have any questions do the, drop them in the comment section below I would be really happy to answer all of them that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos till then take care bye bye I'm Sanket Singh signing off